Many people just want to leave all their crap behind and sail off into the sunset. However, their rigging is busted or their engine is shot, literally or metaphorically speaking. If that sounds like the truth, well then, our videos are definitely for you. These running shoes are a lot like the boats that I've helped to fix and sail. They're second hand, they've survived thus far, and now I'm not about to give up on them. I can't just go out and buy a new, proper pair. But they need to be reasonably safe to operate. So here are my running shoes, and with a little love and repair, they might just keep on trucking. Yes, there we go. Good as new. Just as the day I bought them. On our new, gently used sailboat in Esperado, we were commencing Project V-Birth. To feel somewhat normal and human, we find that when acquiring a new boat, the first order of business is to have a comfortable place to sleep. There's no use to stress the importance of a good night's sleep. We prepped the area to receive the clean new mattresses. We traced and measured the old mattresses to cut out new foam from a shop nearby in Playa del Carmen. The foam sheet cost a thousand pesos, which is about 50 US dollars, and was exactly enough to make two triangular V-birth sides. We measured the cotton material from a local linen shop to make the protective covering for the foam. The process was like a life-size game of Tetris, fitting the shape snugly onto as little area as possible. It was then time to baste, or so lightly, all the pieces together. Tony and Celine have cats in the shop to test the quality of all the work there. With the protective layer on both mattresses, it was now time to draw out the umbrella coverings. Yes indeed, we are living it up with some fabulous umbrella material. Just like the first layer of material over the foam, we measured carefully twice, with half an inch lip all around the shapes. And then we cut this umbrella, not with a pair of scissors, but instead with what I'd like to call the hot hockey skate that seals the material's edge. My hot hockey skate lines are not so straight as Tony's. And the bottom of each one would be a poriferous plastic material to keep away mildew that often collects on boat mattresses. Instead of basting, the umbrella would need two-sided tape to hold things together until sewing. Lalo, who works in the shop, is skilled with the sewing machine, and we were lucky to have him assemble everything expertly. Quite a contrast from the last cushion projects of our previous boats. It's really delightful to have our first ever cushions that can be cared for by easily removing the outer layer and washing properly if needed. <laughs> Made with proper marine materials and finally allowing us to get a proper night's sleep. We also have a bit of a kitchen going on in our boat now, with a makeshift stovetop. Just enough to keep ourselves and the doggy fed. Choco's favorite dish is fish and rice, which is appropriate for a boat dog, luckily. <sighs> yeah, he loves his fish. Nom 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 nom, and it's all gone. The only problem has been the lack of light after the sun goes down. We cook by phone light. Luckily, in these dark times, our viewers have come to the rescue to make the creation of these videos a little better. 
Our patron Brian sent us a one terabyte hard drive to help us organize the massive amounts of footage and files that we've collected over the years. Thank you, Brian. And Adriana sent us a mystery package as well. Oof. It's a razor blade. What do we have here? Ooh, we have some LED lights. That is really, really nice. These useful items, including this solar charge controller, are going to help us begin the project of getting some functioning electronics and lights on board. There's my wire puller right there. Just give Chuck the wires I want to pull out and he'll just pull them out for me. Basically, in a solar charge controller, you can, well, most new ones, you can check the different turn, how much uh, power is coming in, how many amps are coming in, how many amps have come in, what's the voltage of the battery. And uh, there's basically six holes, two for panel, two for battery, and two for like, any accessory like light or USB charger, inverter, anything you want that's not too big. And uh, so that's a positive and negative for your solar panel, a positive and ne negative for your battery, and that's a positive and negative for your appliance. We are going to basically rip, rip everything out because uh, what I have been taking out, I've been opening and checking, and most of the wires are badly corroded on the boat, and it's a mess. So I decided to just start from scratch. And for that, some people have sent us a solar charge on controller, some LED lights, and the first 100 feet of wire so take out the old one and uh, yeah, put the new one back in. This is uh, 100 feet of 16 gauge wire, which would be run across the boat to power anything from lights to power switches. Uh, it's a little bit big for LED lights, so I think we're going to mainly use it for, for power, like uh, pumps and uh, other systems. And uh, we're still deciding where to go smaller for the light. This, this basic size of wire will cover most of our needs. But uh, we need bigger ones to, for example, to make solar panel uh, connections in the solar panel and the solar charge controller. Those wires need to be bigger. The bigger, the better what those ones are. And uh, we need really big ones to make sure that the power gets from the battery to the windlass. Those have to be pretty big. And uh, so the ones between connecting the batteries, the one from the batteries to the engine, those are really big. But those are usually easier to outsource because they're usually heavy to. Uh, you know, also it's easier to get locally than shipped. So, until a certain size of wire, you can get shipped. After that, might as well look for it locally. Like we found it here in Cancun, the large wire. And another thing we received, which is which we have really enjoyed in our last two boats, is all of these strips. We look forward to making our boat ultra bright again, <laughs> so you can see. And then we'll see about putting light, moving light around like reds and other colors. But first, we're gonna light up the boat nicely. This is one of many strips that have to be installed on the boat. They draw very little power uh, and uh, they can be stuck anywhere. They are low profile and uh, they are pretty good uh, against humidity and stuff like that. They do have one downside which I find which is wiring them. Like the beginning of the, of the strips in the end usually are pre-connected by the factory and they do a really good job. Uh, doing it yourself they do sell clips that you pop on but uh, I have found that I get an average of one out of three that malfunction and twitches and you have to like tape it up and so that's been an issue. So if anyone knows what is the best way to connect these, like soldering or do they have particularly good clips to sell, is how do you connect these once you cut them? Because I've installed a lot of them and I still get that problem that it's connecting the cut ones is extremely difficult. So. If anyone's going to have a tip on that, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> right now we have what I like to call the scary room, or my, which I scare people with it, is the battery compartment right now. Little shop of horrors. Little shop of horrors. One battery is good, it's all dusty and cruddy, but it's actually brand new. And uh, the other batteries have to be connected and we have to add more. Ideally we add four batteries here and uh, two on this side or a shit ton more if we go electric, which is still a possibility on this boat. I have looked over it, it does kind of make sense, everything, but where I look, things are corroded, things have not been crimped properly, and I'm still deciding whether to rebuild most of it or just buy a new electric board. Nowadays they make pre-wired boards, they're pretty cheap, or do I buy the components on Amazon like switches and fuse and make the same one like I did. I could take it apart, use the front, use most of it. I would just replace the switches, all, of, all the switches. I use everything except the switches. We can use all these for fuses. We can put fuse uh, in here. We can have one big main fuse pop. So you turn it on, that powers up the board. 
and then you just have all your tuck, 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 your switches. And these you just unscrew them, put the new one in, screw it back on, done. Put the new one in, and then we just rewire everything neatly. Why, why, why? There's just too many like things have been added, added, and now it's been see, just wires everywhere. So just gonna remove everything and then start from new everything. The inverter is probably salvageable. Well, it's the only inverter for now. It's gonna be using that one, but we do enjoy the small ones, the ones that just plug in. Anyway, even the cigarette lighter, they consume very little power and they're really good, they're better, I think, to turn on cell phone, you have what they need, and then you turn on your bigger, nicer inverter just to run, you know, your blender, your bigger stuff occasionally. Tip number one, turn off the main power switch before attempting to rip anything out. So it wasn't turned off? Why are you taking off those ends? Makes it easier to pull the wire to the small holes. What the hell are these two? The wires in this boat literally have been snaked very individually to all the boat, taking turns and all. And it makes them very difficult to get access, like I'm trying to get see which wire is which. So what we're thinking of doing is actually make, running a PVC pipe neatly all along the boat, anchored at various points, and then we can have openings in each area where we want a wire to come out. One running each side, and you just have the wire and you just go to it. There's no real method here. It's it's more of a hack and slash job. Okay. So mass is completely free right now. The radar I'm gonna remove. That's going to come out of the mast, that's going to come out of the mast, the antenna, and the lights are going to stay. I think, I don't know if I'm going to leave the wind indicator cable. Well, I'm trying to keep the wires as long as I can for everything, and then I'll clean and check the wires that I can save, but most of the wires I've opened have been black inside, so... Guts of the boat. Mm. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty gory. We tackled everything, even those wires in the dark cramped spaces. We removed the reusable fittings for hanging the next set of electrical wires. A little while back, Robbie removed some of the shelving in the saloon and started rebuilding the bench that opened into a bottomless pit. With the old plywood, he closed the pit into the bilge and miraculously fit a new sheet of plywood into the boat through the companionway. Magic. <laughs> no, it fits in like, with like, I would say a millimeter to spare maybe. We used Robbie's trusty cordless jigsaw to cut the sheet lickety split. He then used the old improvised compass method to shape the sheets snug to the hull and the water pipe. All the things that used to be taking up the back cabin now have a storage spot under the bed. Hooray! A lingering, figurative, giant white elephant remained in the room. So we haven't used the engine in a bit, and for now it seems like it doesn't even turn, so we'll find out. We don't have exactly the right socket, so I'm gonna try with this, and then we'll It's taking out the big wrench. Yeah, we're taking out the big wrench. It's the pulley where all the, uh, where all the belts are attached to, and you just, which is connected to the engine, and if you, you can turn it, it means you can turn the engine. Usually you should be able to do it by hand. So why don't they just make all engines so that they can start manually? Because over a certain horsepower, the human body cannot produce the strength to create the compression for the first, the first compression. It's way too, too strong. And if you get the kickback, oh, look, that fits beautifully. Unable to turn it with the wrench, we invited Tony down to the boat, and with him he brought some rusty metal to force the wheel to turn.
but things weren't looking so great. You just touched the engine and you started like yeah. pouring sweat. We've basically come into Port Aventuras. We brought the boat from Isla Mujere and the engine, in my opinion, barely made it inside five minutes like it was smoking and it was sounding weird the revs were all over the place they were going up and down and it was going ah, mm. and the engine is pretty much seized so now we have to get a socket that will fit the injectors to crack the injectors open maybe put some oil inside and it still brings up the conundrum is do we really feel like spending any time and money on this engine or just pull out get rid of it get a new engine brought in or the other option would be is if we can get started it might bring us to Florida where we can go pick up uh, an engine which makes it much easier than having one brought here to Mexico and the problem is that there's tons of engines in the US for sale in pretty decent condition you know they range from thousand five hundred to thousand dollars I mean they're not new engines but they're fairly in good condition I've seen some good deals but the only problem is that they're in the states they're in Florida they're in Texas they're in Tucson they're in places that that we need to get there to get the engine so the question is how do we get there we put an outboard engine behind the boat do we get towed out and sail our way there and get towed back in i mean we moved on to the next matter replacement of the bearings of our brand new random orbit sander that exploded last video we located the tiny part number on the bearing case and found a place selling within mexico and we ordered 10 replacement bearing cases because it would have cost more money to buy only one somehow Anyway, good to have more, seeing as the first one crapped out so quickly. Good as new. 